All right, before I start my show where I scream at clouds, you know, meal prepping is a real pain in the you-know-what. And I don't care what anybody tells you, it's an incredible amount of work, and you're liable to make a lot of food that is very repetitive. So your big plan to eat well is pretty much submarined after week one. What if you could take all the convenience of meal prep, except you don't do a bit of it, and no repetition? That's what factor meals are all about delivered to you regularly ready to go you warm them up in some of the greatest tastes you'll ever have you'll be like how can this possibly be it's a perfectly cooked amazing meal without a ton of calories and all the nutrition and energy i need to live a healthy lifestyle let's face it time is a factor and if you're short on time you aren't going to eat well Forget the time factor. Forget paying too much for getting takeout food. How about something absolutely perfect, ready to go? When things get hectic, factor is flexible. You can even change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week or pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. This is so set up for you, you're going to love it. Stress less over meal times in the new year. Factors, no prep. No mess meals, free up time, otherwise spent shopping, cooking, and cleanup. No more wasting all that time. Listen, head to factormeals.com slash Zane50 and use code Zane50 to get 50% off. That's right, code Zane50 at factormeals.com slash Zane50 to get 50% off. Factormeals.com slash Zane50. Use code Zane50 to get 50% off. That's code Zane50 at factormeals.com slash Zane50 to get 50% off. Do it. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Eric Tank Show podcast, the daily show, where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures from right here in the Impact Power Sports studio. Thank you so much for taking a little time out and hanging out. I'm making it sound like it's a charity. Thanks for taking time to support me. Uh, it was a, um, a birthday party, a birthday celebration that I had to attend and I can only, I can't, no, I can express, but barely how badly I was, um, ticking with my ADHD. This had all of the factors to make my brain, oh, just like short circuiting the entire time. Maybe this describes you. I don't know. So it's a dear friend of ours celebrating her 60th birthday and her sister celebrating her 50th birthday. So they're together. We got food. We've got, we've got, uh, at, we, they rented out the pool, one of the Polish halls. Okay. You know how the Polish halls are. They, they, they like rent out rooms to people, but then you got like Polish members, you know, a bunch of Polacks are down in one portion of the Polish hall, like eating kibasa and drinking. And then in our end of the Polish hall, we've got our party. This is a big room. Big room. You got a band playing there. Everybody's, oh my God, having a hell of a time. And there I am literally in a corner of a room behind a sign. So you can only see my head just standing there. <laughs> incapable of anything fun because I'm just, it's so bad. Oh, unbelievably uncomfortable. But, uh, one of the sweetest, this is my backup wife's birthday party. Now everyone's having a good time. I can't say that I didn't have a good time. I just was so goddamn uncomfortable. That's just how my brain works. I, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh my God, it was awesome. It, it was awesome. But for me, it just, oh. I walked in and there was, you know, the crowd hadn't yet gotten there. We were like first ones there and I'm like, oh man, I can tell this environment is going to kill me. It's just going to kill me. And I try so damn hard, but... The band is, um, 
is playing and they're busting out like 80s hits. The band was really good. They were called um, Pleasure Town. <laughs> T-O-W-N-E, Pleasure Town. They were really good. This was a fantastic band. They were They were tight, as they say. They're playing all covers, but, uh, you know, when it comes to, um, the, like the music industry, you make like more money as a cover band, you know, like Waylon, like the most Waylon's ever made on stage is like 50 bucks. And then the cover band, you can have four guys who don't even know how to play and they're going to make $5,000. In fact, they busted out a version of the Arrhythmics, Sweet Dreams. Sweet dreams are made of these. It was awesome. It was so good. And I'm in the corner with, with my water. Behind a sign. Now, I don't know if it has something to do with everybody else drinking. But not everybody. I, I shouldn't say everybody else. Not everybody was drinking. But those people are all still having a good time. And I'm like, Aram says Eric sounds like an introvert. I wouldn't say that. I think it's, I, um, I just, when I know that I'm in a room like that, the ADHD just makes me want to move. I, I don't like, like anywhere. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I don't, I don't like to be in one place, confined to one place. So I quite literally uh, first of all, it was an older building, so I had to explore the damn place. So I'm trying to find unlocked doors. I'm, wand- I'm wandering away from the party on my own, trying to find things to get in trouble that I can get in trouble with. I find none. I walk out of the place. I'm Now I'm outside, and I walk around the block. No lie. Back in, get more water, uh, get some snacks. Jacqueline is there. Jacqueline and Justin, my daughter, Jackie, and my son-in-law, Justin, they're not going to stay that long. And, um, we're going to do the Irish goodbye. Jackie says to me, did you know that if you do an Irish goodbye, you add two days of your life? I said, I've not heard of that. And she says, yes, that's true. Or she says, yes, that's true. So I'm like, okay, all right, great. Well, I don't know. If that sounds silly, but, uh, yeah, eventually it's like, I got to go. Got there at six. It's going on eight thirty. That is, and I said to Diana, um, she goes, "You can leave whenever you want. I'll get a ride home." And the theme of the um, it was like a rock and roll theme, and so everybody's got rock and roll shirts. By the way, most popular band, ACDC. I probably saw six or seven ACDC T-shirts. Diana went and got me three of those. T-shirts that you see wherever at Meyer. You know how like old band names are all that retro shit is coming back. So you see like a 14 year old kid with a Boston T-shirt or Led Zeppelin. She goes, you can choose any one of these. You got MTV, Led Zeppelin, or this one here. At first I thought I go, well, Led Zeppelin's like one of my favorite, favorite groups of all time, but no, I got to go with the death row records. Got the Dobermans on the front, Death Row Records. Only one guy wearing a Death Row Records t-shirt, and that's your old pal, Easy. And now I've got a Death Row Records t-shirt. Uh, now, one more variable. The birthday girl, Sherry, is uh, really into black dudes. And um, this is, like I said, this is my backup wife. And she said, uh, the only thing I'm into more than you, Eric, uh, is uh, black dudes. And these five black dudes walk in. And they totally crashed the party. They actually um, were just showing up to the hall to get a drink and play some pool and ping pong in the downstairs of the Polish hall. But. That bar, there was they uh, they found out there was a party going on upstairs, so they came upstairs. So you got the whitest people ever, and five black dudes walk in, and everybody said, "Hey, what the hell are those black dudes doing here?" Now these five dudes look like 
rich fuckers who were going out on the town. The handsomest dudes you'll ever see. And Sherry is like jizzing. That's the birthday girl. She goes, did you see? What's going on here? There's five black guys here. I'm in love. I go, I know. Look at them. They're, they're, they're handsome. Holy shit. Go get those handsome devils. And then she goes, are they strippers? Did you guys hire strippers? Like, no, you asshole. We didn't hire strippers. What the fuck is wrong with you? I think they're just here getting a drink. So she go. everybody goes, and uh, all these white people go, and all they want to do is hang out with the black people. And then I hear, I'm not with them. I'm in line getting like a Sprite or something. And I hear, yeah, motherfucker with a death, with a death row record shirt. And I'm like, he's talking about me. Fuck yes. I look at him and go, yeah, death row records. Fuck yes. Oh my God. Uh, So that was so cool. It was a good time, but that was the only part of it that I liked because I had to get out of there. If the black guys had hung out with me, I may have enjoyed it more, but then, Ooh, it's time to go. It is time to go. So Jackie, myself, Justin, uh, grab our coat. Now, one of my buddies who is an Irish goodbye veteran is uh, Dave Veldink, who I've talked to Dave. I've talked about Dave for years. A longtime family friend. And uh, he can't leave like I can. I just, I can just get up and go. He cannot. And like when we go to a wedding together, if there's a wedding, one of our uh, circle of friends, uh, kids has a wedding. So I always go bring Diana and then I leave with Dave. Usually the second we get done eating, we leave. We just can't stand it. Not going to sit there and dance to uh, uh, Dancing Queen by ABBA. We're not going to do all that chick shit. We're going to get the fuck out of there. And uh, I'm walking down the steps, getting out of the Polish hall with Jackie. Justin, time to go, time to go. We put in our two and a half hours, had, said happy birthday, said I love yous, but, or said I love yous, we, but we got to go. It's time to go, baby. And Velding's doing what I'm doing. He's wandering around like an idiot. And I, I see him, I go, see you later, Dave. He goes, oh my God, Jesus, come on. I go, I'm not, no, no, no. Every man for himself, bye. Out the door. Came home just in time to snuggle up to, to the dogs. 9 p.m., way late for EZ, and watched a three-part uh, Netflix show on uh, how they finally arrested John Gotti. Unbelievable. Great story, by the way. There's, it's called uh, Getting Gotti on Netflix. It's all right. It's not perfect, but it's all right. It's about how, uh, well, how they got Gotti, John Gotti. Okay, so good. So so much fun. So much fun to leave and get in bed and watch Getting Gotti. I'm screwed up. I'm telling you. I am an absolute wreck. I am incapable of having fun in those environments. I'm incapable of having fun in the environment that I prefer to be in if I'm not doing a certain activity. The environment that I always want to be in is around a campfire. That is, to me, the goal. If I could be anywhere, I would be around a campfire in the middle of the woods. But while everyone is seated around the campfire, I must be moving from place to place, picking up sticks, playing fetch with the dog, raking something for no particular reason. It's Eric, sit down. I'm like, no chopping wood. Uh, uh-uh. not interested. Why don't, why, why do you work so much? I go, this is not work. This is relaxation. This is how my brain works. This is what I prefer to do. Um, my soul sister, Megan, who is me in exquisitely beautiful female form writes ADHD. She is a hyper ball of energy as I am. Um, she knows what it's like when you just say anything off the top of your head 
and don't give a shit what anybody thinks. Like the other day, Megan said something that I dare not repeat. Okay. And I know that she said that because of the ADHD. You cannot be in a scenario like right here in this room alone and uh, do what I do unless you are gifted with the superpower of ADHD. It can't be. If you are not blessed with the gift of baby Jesus that baby Jesus has given us. So look at this. While I'm sitting here, I'm fucking moving all around. Oh. <sighs> anyway. That, um, it was remarkably uh, difficult for me. But I made it through. I'm done. Uh, back in my environment with, with my dogs. Uh, Madison home for a few days, Christmas break. Uh, last night was a spectacular feast. Oh, my God. Oh, the chicken sandwiches, the uh, uh, crispy chicken sandwiches. So fantastic. So good. Uh, the French fries made by America's number one fry cook did not overeat. Your old pal Easy did not overeat. I'm on a little bit of a roll with the overeating. Since last Sunday, I take it back. I had um, uh, two too many cupcakes. My wife made cupcakes and I had three. So I, I, I did kind of, but outside of that, since last Sunday or Monday, I've been doing all right. I've been um, cutting back the calories and it, uh, it feels pretty good. Actually, I, it's um, when you're, when you were are as plump as I, as I am, um, you can really start to tell when actually some of the plumpiness is starting, when your body's starting to like deep plump, it might just be, well, uh, it might just all be in my head, but I swear after Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, well, no, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Monday through Friday of a thousand calories, that alone made me feel like a million times better. You get like that um, momentum. And then all through Saturday, I was good. But I went to that party where I had that damn anxiety attack. And um, I said, okay, well, I've only, I'm actually keeping track. I go, all right, I've had 600 calories today. Like legit, going into that party, I only had 600 calories. And I felt fine. Had my bowl of cream of weed with all my good stuff in it. Later on, I had a salad with a little bit of dressing. No big deal. Let's go. Now you can... Uh, you can you can actually enjoy yourself. A couple pieces of pizza, not the end of the world. But then, okay, snacking. The next two hours, all I did was snack. Still, though, feel great. Feel great. Um, Aram talks about ADHD. It creates horrible anxiety for some people if not treated. You are not kidding, man. When I uh, sat down with the guy who administered the ADHD test, and boy, I uh, I said to him, I go, okay, test. So what are you going to do? Just take like a, a vial of blood, and then it's going to come back positive for ADHD? He goes, no, 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 no. You have to take a test. I go, yeah, I know, blood test. No. You have to take an actual test. And uh, all I remember is shapes. Words, boxes, squiggly lines. And I go, oh. He goes, uh, block off two and a half hours of time. I go, fuck that. I go, what? Two and a half hours of time? I don't do anything for two and a half hours. Well, sometimes I podcast, but that's, I mean, at least I'm doing, I'm moving, I'm talking, I'm. You want me to stare at a stupid screen for two and a half hours, you dick? Like, oh, God damn it. So, you know, I get 15 minutes into that deal, and I'm like, whatever, A. I, yeah, okay, great. Yeah, this is okay. Oh, boy, fucking awesome. And, uh, 
Excuse me. Okay, uh, let uh, come on back. Let's. Uh, this is days later. Let's uh, go over your test results. Oh yeah, gee, I wonder what it's going to say. What a big surprise this is going to be. So obviously the results were what we all expected it would be. And then this pissed me off. I go, so all right. Well, I, I got it. Okay. Uh, what do we do? What's treatment? And his quote, no, nothing, nothing now. I mean, come on. I mean, nothing. You mean, I did all this fucking test for this long and you're going to tell me that there's nothing I should do for it. He goes, no, you've, you've adapted. You've, uh, this would, it would hurt you if you, if you changed, if you suddenly became, I mean, this is how you earn your living. I wouldn't want to jeopardize that. And you, people know you for who you are. No, you're not getting any medicine. He's a, he's a uh, professional who's, he's tough to prescribe medicines, you know, like when he found out that I upped my anxiety medicine dosage from, uh, I, I forget what it was, but anyway, I doubled it. He goes, oh, good. More medicine. That, that's, that's good. That's real good. I'm like, shut the fuck up. <sighs> yeah. No, you don't get any medicine. Just g- go and chop your wood and pick up your sticks and move around and, and be f- afraid at your stupid parties. Uh, so he's kind of an old school dude. Which is, you know, he's the old rub some dirt on it, Doc, which I kind of appreciate. You know, you got, it's okay to have a doc that, uh, you know, all right, let's give you some medicine. But it's okay to also have another doc that's like, no, I'm not giving you any medicine, you stupid dick. Go take a walk. Okay. So, uh, but then I was like, well, then why did you give me the fucking test? You know, I've got it. Why do you, the fuck? I had to sit here for two and a half hours doing this thing. You should pay me. I'm not your guinea pig. Well, anyway. Um, was uh, looking at our Reddit page, the Eric Zane podcast Reddit page, which is very little activity on it. There's like two people that post. It's just not a big deal. And uh, occasionally you'll get somebody on there who's just there to uh, pick a fight. Well, actually, I should say that about our very own Patrick, who is only there to pick a fight, but not with me. Patrick is a long time, was a long time listener of Freebird Hot Wings. Finally, one day he got fed up and said, all right, I'm 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 done with them. Now I'm going to just listen to Zane. And, I, and in my spare time, all I'm going to do is attack Freebeer. He actually sounds like me. But he did a uh, little graphic here. He took some, he loves these corny photoshops. And he took the tops of three heads and said, you got to pick which one is free beer, which one is an ape and which one is Trump. And I, I don't know. So you, you had to guess. So some dude comes on there. Right. I just can't do it anymore. The free podcast has gotten to be a huge ad for the Patreon. And it's like, well, no, it hasn't. I talk about it for like a minute and a half, maybe out of the 120 that I speak. Uh, Then he adds, which I guess is who are these free beers? Who are these Zanes? All old or borrowed content. That's not true at all. The jokes are brand new. The reactions are brand new. Give me a fucking break. Trump is funny. Not Zane. Kyle is funny. Also not Zane. His dad is entertaining. Not Zane. What content from Zane is actually worth listening to? He is worse than hot wings now. Now that, that actually does hurt. He talked about a fucking curing coffee maker for a week. That's true. 
He has been talking about one dog eating the other dog's shit for 15 years. That's not true. O'Neill has only been with us for seven. Maybe eight. That makes me sad. He was so much better when he was on BBL. Sorry, man, but step it up. I wrote, this isn't an airport. First segment of Monday is telling you to go fuck yourself. How's that for content? Uh, oh, I will be glued to the podcast. Not really. How could anyone not predict the content? In this case, it really is an airport. If it were not, Monday's show would not be part of it, right? Uh, gave you some content. Congrats. You still suck. Guess we know who sent the email to you, EZ, the other day. This is from a different person that you thought was Stu. All right. And then I went ahead and looked at that person's uh, long, rich history and has a uh, is, is a known troll, just someone who probably doesn't even listen. And if they do, it's just once in a while and then probably got pissed off because I made fun of Free Brand Hot Wings and this is what I get. Either that or it's John and Jenison, who is so round these days. I cannot believe how round John and Jenison is. He has a uh, YouTube channel. God, I got to find this thing. John Pulas- Pulaski YouTube. This guy was the uh, biggest fan for the longest time. He was one of those people that used to like come over to my house once in a while. And, how long uh, does it take you to die? Then he, he uh, what the fuck? I don't know. Have you dreamed um, of getting your pilot one license? One day he just fucking freaked out. And he's like, I hate you, EZ. I, I, I'm so sick of you. I love Joe. Uh, Joe didn't do anything to assault any women. Or some shit like that. All right. And then so this whale. Uh, seriously, man, the guy, he has really, really uh, stopped worrying about how, what calories he's getting. This fat fuck. Um, I saw I found out that he has a YouTube channel and uh, I went ahead and uh, clicked on one of these stupid videos of him trying to play guitar. He actually plays, I shouldn't say that he plays, uh, he plays pretty well. And I, uh, I started like throwing insults about how fat he is. And, uh, he, <laughs> I got a, I got a warning from YouTube saying, we do not allow bullying here. This is a safe space. I'm like, bullshit. This guy is the biggest bully on the fucking planet. What a pussy. He's like, it's like he's playing something from like the Mel Bay big note song book. We're going to hear like Mary had a little lamb in a second. (laughs) Oh no. Come on, man. Oh, fuck. Well, anyway, can't fault him for trying. I give him an A for effort. Well, anyway, if you, uh, if, if you want to, it might be fun for you to head over to, uh, to John's big YouTube channel and let him know how great he is and, uh, and any other nice things you want to say about him. He's a great guy. He's really an asshole fucking dick. There you go. Uh, okay. Thanks for being uh, part of the Facebook uh, page and the Twitch right now and YouTube and on to now. Damn it. I'm, I'm screwing this whole, whole thing up. I completely lost my train of thought. If you're watching the show uh, on Facebook X and YouTube, thank you so much. Otherwise the audio podcast is available wherever you download shows. And um, 
as well. The Patreon is available for you. There you go. There's your ad for Patreon. Sign up for free for seven days. Uh, Today, I went ahead and um, posted a impromptu dude interview. I take it back. I posted that on the free platform. So wherever you download shows, today at 1 p.m., there's going to be an impromptu dude interview. I think you'll like it. It's explained as to what's going on with that. But we haven't heard from the dude in quite some time. But he is still alive and well in Maryland. He will come back one day, I promise you. All right. The open and the live stream of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Brought to you today by Green Medicine Shop. The folks over at Green Medicine Shop want you to be aware that when it comes to cannabis, you can get a $100 in-store credit when you show up there with your medical card. So if you you are a, ca- uh, a shopper and you get your medical card through Green Medicine Shop, you can then turn around and get a $100 in-store credit. You go to thegreenmedicineshop.com. Click on get a medical card. From there, this is a 15-minute process. You pay 90 bucks for the card. Show proof that you got the card when you go to the store and you get a $100 in-store credit at Green Medicine Shop. Go to their website, The Green Medicine Shop, for all the other particulars, the products, uh, what they sell, the different, uh, the different uh, styles of uh, products that they sell. Of course, uh, edibles, CBD products, and much more. And uh, if you are a consumer, go ahead and consume away with the Green Medicine Shop. They are in Greenville, Michigan, which is off of the beaten path, but well worth it for the medical cannabis that you um, can actually take advantage of, which is a different standard when it comes to quality of uh, recreational marijuana and that's one of the questions that they hear most often why would i why would i uh, uh, seek out your place the medical cannabis provisioning center at green medicine shop when i just can go up the corner to the corner and get whatever the hell i want um well first and foremost they're a sponsor of mine uh, this amazing couple matt and shawnee are trying to get this business off the ground in greenville michigan and they do have a couple of roadblocks one of them being that the community of Greenville, Michigan says, nah, not in our neighborhood. So they have to remain open as a medical cannabis facility in a world where anybody can go get cannabis at any recreational facility. That's not the way they are able to do it. So they are relying on their customer service. They are relying on their effort. They are relying on the quality of their products for you to make the trip up with a medical card from Green Medicine Shop and purchasing cannabis from them. If you do partake, please check out Green Medicine Shop. I was talking last week about taking a caravan up there, and then somebody came up with the idea about me filling up the RV and driving everybody to the Green Cannabis, I'm sorry, to the Green Medicine Shop on the Eric Zancho podcast, uh, Cannabis Caravan. I still want to do the caravan, but I can't pile you all in the RV because... The state of Michigan, you can't um, travel with more than 2.5 ounces. So if I've got 30 pounds of pot in the RV, uh, you know, that's going to be a felony uh, distribution charge. And, you know, we just can't have that, though that would be hilarious if we, <laughs> if I didn't think about that and we did that and we're driving back and a cop pulls us over and he says, yeah, this thing is is, is listing because there's so much pot in it. You're going to prison for life. I'd be the only person in Michigan who would get a pot charge in the last five years because of the way the law is these days. But um, we still are going to do the uh, caravan. I imagine it would be probably on a weekend. Maybe I could picture like a Saturday afternoon going up there, getting a bite to eat in uh, beautiful Greenville, taking you all in, introducing you to Matt and Shawnee, those of you who partake, buying your cannabis, and then you go home. 
then you go home. That is the best way we're going to do it. Who's up for the Eric St. Joe podcast cannabis caravan? I'm kind of like gauging the interest right here. Uh, you can always email me to tell me if you'd be up for that. I don't even know which one, how many of you smoke, smoke or eat or CBD, use CBD products. CBD products aren't like anything that gets you high. You know, that's like the medicinal properties only of uh, cannabis that, um, for pain relief and things like that. Well, anyway, uh, but I'm excited to have them on board with the show. And, uh, I look forward to uh, talking about them for a many, many months to come. So welcome to, uh, the green medicine shop.com online. Also Andy and Colleen at King's room barbershop King's room.net online, three locations, Northland drive, Caledonia and Wyoming at 821 36th street next to the costume room. A fantastic place to get your hair cut. If you are a dude and if you get your hair cut at either Zach's sport clips, um, Jude's lady Jane's or wherever, I want you to try out King's room barbershop. It's the King's room barbershop challenge. Again, you're helping out a sponsor. When you help out my sponsors and, Engage them with what they have to offer, whether it's cannabis or haircuts. And then you mention me. That means it's working and they will let me know. So if you like the free show as it is, support the sponsors, because if they disappear, so does the free podcast. That's when I have to go get another job. So there you go. King's Room Barbershop, uh, online at kingsroom.net for exact locations. And um, some of the different uh, price menu points. They don't call it a menu. Price points at uh, kingsroom.net. Exact locations and schedules is what I'm trying to say. All right. If you are a Super Bowl winning quarterback, about to again uh, take part in the biggest game of your life. I think one of the, uh, it's Patrick Mahomes. You know, it seems like, Another reason why he very well could be the greatest quarterback ever. And I've touched on this before. One of the reasons why he may be the actual greatest of all time is he has performed at an incredibly high level despite the unbelievable distractions by his asshole family. The brother, every time you turn around, he's doing something annoying or stepping in shit. Didn't he at uh, the commander's stadium where you know, they used to be the Redskins? I think it was Sean Taylor is one of their key players back in the day. He was tragically killed or tragically died in an accident or some shit or Shot. I, I don't I don't recall exactly. It might have been a car wreck. Doesn't matter. But they honored him on the field and put his number on the field. Like to be there in perpetuity to honor this 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 everybody loved him. And they had this big unveiling ceremony and and the mom and dad are there and they're they're all weepy. Like, oh my god, we miss him so much. And then Patrick Mahomes' brother comes in and starts dancing on the number. Because that's his thing, you know, he got famous on TikTok because he does all these fucking dances. He shows up. He's like, ah, let me dance. He's dancing on the number. Fucking asshole. And I think it was a whole bunch of other crazy shit he did. Some of it illegal. Then he got accused of assaulting some chick. I guess that just got dropped like a month ago, which nobody talked about. You got Brittany, his wife, who, uh, I forgot what she did. That was annoying. Mahomes' mom is also a pain in the ass. She does annoying shit all the time. Not so much these days. Because now the only thing people are talking about with the Chiefs is uh, is, is like uh, Taylor Swift. Who really doesn't do anything annoying. She's just there. Have you heard that? There's been a lot of backlash about people who, okay, you got people that say, I hate Taylor Swift. And then you ask them why. And they go, well, because she's on TV. And it's like, well, she's not putting herself on TV. She's watching the football game that her boyfriend is playing. And huh? what the fuck did she do? She didn't do anything. 
Uh, I am not a Taylor Swift hater. I'm, I don't, it means nothing to me. I do not get angry that she's on TV. I do not get happy that she's on TV. I do not listen to her music. I sound like a Dr. Seuss book. Um, she announced on the Grammys last night that she has a new album coming out in, in April and everybody went ape shit. It's like, Oh my God. The only thing I'm interested in Taylor Swift is her actually endorsing Joe Biden, because if she actually endorses Joe Biden, that might mean that, um, Joe Biden has a chance to win. Like quite literally right now he's going to lose. But if Taylor Swift says, I want everybody to register because there'll be 18 year old chicks who aren't even registered to vote. If Taylor Swift says, I want every 18 year old young lady in America to register to vote and vote for Joe Biden, then Joe Biden will win. Corey says she hates Trump. So it's pretty much a sure thing. Well, then she should do it. She should do it like right now because I mean, it takes time to get all your ducks in a row. You got till November to make this happen. Um, but then there's, uh, Patrick Mahomes, dad, Pat Mahomes. This is all proof that Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback, he can uh, perform at a very high level despite all of the asshole behavior going on in his family. To me, that makes him, uh, the uh, greatest, uh, uh, fucking quarterback of all time, even more so than uh, Tom Brady. I don't see Tom Brady having to perform with uh, his dad getting shit faced and driving around, but that's what Patrick Mahomes has to deal with. The fucking dad was sloshed again the other day. Now this fucker, I think is only like my age. Yeah, he is my age. And isn't there a, 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 a thing that people say, say, uh, black don't crack suggesting that, uh, black people age better than white people. It's not even an insult. It's true. Uh, how many times have you seen a, uh, a 75 year old black guy and he looks like he's 40, like fucking Carl Weathers, Carl Weathers has been dead the whole weekend. And he still looks like Apollo Creed. Aram says, former major league pitcher, Pat Mahomes. Yes, that is Patrick Mahomes' father. I didn't know if you knew that. Uh, uh, he used to uh, pitch for a few teams. Yeah, by the way, Carl Weathers dying. I heard from Al uh, Adam Balboa. He wrote to me, did you hear the uh, terrible news? I thought, oh my God, what happened? Yeah, Carl Weathers died. All right, well, that is terrible news. I mean, all the iconic roles that guy played, Apollo Creed. He played uh, uh, Chubbs in uh, Happy Gilmore. And I think he uh, was in, like, the uh, that stupid fucking Mandalorian show. Dead at 70-some years, uh, years old. You know, he was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, too. He played the part of Apollo Creed. Cole says he was in the film Predator. So does Chris. He played the part of Apollo Creed. Yeah. If you were to look at him right now, he would look better than uh, any 30-year-old white guy. But that, that doesn't hold true for uh, Patrick Mahomes' dad, Pat. This guy looks like shit. Of course, this is the mugshot after his Saturday arrest on a, his third driving while intoxicated charge. What a fucking idiot. Here he is pitching for the Mets. There's a story going around that... Um, this is dead. They're, they're, they divorced in 06. Pat 
and um and mom her name is Randy that um when Mahomes when senior first laid eyes on Patrick Mahomes mother he said um you and I are going to get married and we're going to have a baby and he is going to be a superstar. That's the legendary story. Well, this asshole, he's got the thirst and he won't do anything to fix it. Uh, again, another driving drunk driving charge. I'm always amazed at, um, how easy, how lenient the law is pretty much everywhere when it comes to driving drunk. Uh, Arrested Saturday in Tyler, Texas. uh, Arrested eight days before the sun is set to play in the Super Bowl. Now I kind of want uh, Patrick Mahomes to win the Super Bowl because Again, it just adds to the legend. He always performs well, despite crazy shit going on in his life. He is the only not fucked up person in that family. Patrick Mahomes has never said anything sideways. He's never done anything sideways. His entire family is a pile of shit. He's surrounded by assholes, yet he continues to perform at an incredibly high level. Third, drunk driving. There's not a lot about it. All they, all the story is, is that it, it happened. Uh, there's, there's no real details. All it just says he got arrested for a third time and, uh, he bonded out. In 2018, he got his second DWI. He served 40 days in jail on weekends in 19 and 20. Yeah, that's the way they do it. When you get popped for, um, like, if you're a repeat offender and they actually do put you in jail, and he's going to spend even more time in jail now, they do it on the weekends. So that basically, uh, if you if they give you, like, 12 days in jail, they'll do it over six months. I'm sorry, they'll do it every every week. So that's, like, over six weeks. Like, Charity Scam Mike, he got popped. And uh, I think it was his first time, and he got... I think 30 days in jail. And uh, he goes, okay, I'm just going to do my 30 days. And and they go, no, 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 no. You're going to show up on a Friday. And you're going to leave on a Sunday. And then you're going to do that every week until those 30 days are satisfied. So he was telling me that he's like 22 years old. First day he goes in there. On a Friday, he gets dropped off by my uh, stepsister, Elizabeth. (laughs) And he's got his uh, Newport cigarettes, which white people don't smoke Newports. Black people smoke Newports. And he walks in there and uh, he's surrounded by mostly black people for whatever reason. And uh, it's all, it's like a, it's like a bull ring. You're just standing there. And, um, there's no individual cells or anything like that. Just people kind of like groups of people fraternizing. Some people keeping uh, away from, you know, trying not to have any trouble. And he lights up a smoke. You could smoke indoors at that time. And then the next thing he hears is, hey, man, give me one of them new poles. Hey, white boy, give me a new pole. He's like, oh, yeah, sure. Here you go. Here you go. Mike quickly realizes that. He has a commodity. He goes home. and uh, The next week, he's getting ready to go, and Elizabeth's dropping off. He goes, hey, stop at the store. He walks into the jail with two cartons of new pose. And he's like, one for you. You get a pack. You get a pack. You get a pack. You get a pack. He is uh, being smart. So everybody gets a fucking pack of smokes to ensure his, uh, his safety. 
Donut Dan says in that world, it's called give me a square. Yeah, I've heard that too. Hey, man, you got a square? Give me a square. So uh, that was part of Mike's way of uh, uh, staying safe in prison. He hasn't he hasn't fucked up since. Yeah, they need to lock that fucker ass, his, his fucking ass up. Maureen says, dumbass, call an Uber for God's sake. Yeah, there is is literally, uh, you would think that with the advent of uh, ride sharing, that no one would drive drunk. There would be zero drunk driving. All right. Moving on. More football news. This is Christian McCaffrey. Now, this guy is uh, arguably the most coveted player in football. He'll hang 1,500 yards a season on you in running the ball, 500 yards past receptions, lead the, lead the league in touchdowns, big fat fucking contract. I don't know what it is, but I, I think the most recent one was a $65 million deal. And he's dating somebody by the name of Olivia Culpo, C-U-L-P-O. I don't know who she is either, but uh, I don't know who she is, but I think she's rich too. I don't know what she does. She's like an influencer, a movie star, or whatever the fuck. But between... McCaffrey and Olivia Culpo, they are worth a ton of money. So when I see the headline, Christian McCaffrey's mom given a gift, gifted a Super Bowl suite. I'm like, how can she, why is that even a thing where she can't afford? I mean, your son is Christian McCaffrey. San Francisco 49ers star running back Christian McCaffrey's mom will be watching the Super Bowl in style. Olivia Culpo, who was engaged to Christian McCaffrey, posted on Instagram that she had gotten Lisa McCaffrey a suite for her birthday. The gesture came after Lisa McCaffrey said this week that neither her son nor Culpo could afford one for the matchup with the Kansas City Chiefs. This was the quote by McCaffrey's mother. We looked into a suite and none of us can afford it. Not even Christian money bags over there, nor money bags, Olivia. Well, she said, no, no, we actually did buy you a suite. Boy, nothing like uh, rich people complaining about not having rich people shit, right? If I'm Christian McCaffrey, I like say to my mom, yeah, don't fucking do that because it just, it's a bad look. Just fucking sit down and watch a fucking game. Even if we do, why is everybody talking about this shit? You got to keep that on the down low. You're just supposed to not brag about the fucking rich shit that you do. Each suite costs $2 million. So if you wanted to go there, get in the suite, you get a, a couple of free drinks, maybe some peanuts and a pizza, and be able to watch it 10 feet away from the people in the stands, it's $2 million. I don't know how fucked up you have to be, even if you have money, to spend that much money. What a uh, what an excessive waste that is. I don't know if I in it with with a clear conscience knowing how many starving people there are in the world go and blow 2 million dollars on a goddamn suite. But that's coming from someone who lives check to check like you. I think that if we got a ton of money like if we won $500 billion or whatever in the lottery, I think your brain instantly becomes uh, fucked up. And when you 
encounter that. Like if if that happened to us, I think in an instant, um, we would be, uh, my brain would be warped. All right. And I would alienate all of you and it would be terrible. You just, as soon as you get wealthy, you become an absolute fucking psychopath. Cole writes, basically everyone at the Super Bowl watching the game live is an asshole. Asshole of the day, people with Super Bowl tickets. Because the low end, the lowest you will spend for a ticket at the Super Bowl is $8,000. $8,000. What the fuck? I just don't understand. Even if, Even if the Lions win. And someone said, let's go get tickets. Oh, wait. you're caught in the fervor of it. Yeah, we got our plane tickets. And now we're going to, we're going to suck it up. It's once in, a, once in a lifetime. Oh, shit. You asshole. God. I would never be able to do that. No way. So she says out loud. I can't, aff- my son, who has a $65 million contract, um, cannot afford it. That's ridiculous. So, but they ended up coming up with the money, I guess. And uh, away they go. Fun fact, Christian McCaffrey's dad is Ed McCaffrey, who was fantastic in his own right. And he, his dad won three Super Bowls. So basically, the whole fucking family is beyond rich. And they can't scrape together the money to pay for a fucking suite. That's the thing about the Super Bowl. You'll see just, you'll see like um, superstars not in suites. They're actually sitting with fans because it's so expensive for anything. Um, I've heard a lot of stupid people suggest that our Lions fans suggest, oh, you know, I'm so hurt by the Lions losing that I don't even think I'm going to watch the Super Bowl because I got PTSD because the Lions aren't in it. Shut the fuck up, you asshole. My God, I think it's fucking fun to think about that if they hadn't collapsed, they were a uh, half 30 minutes away from being in this fucking game. Uh, now all they are is forgotten. Good. I hope it hurt. I hope it hurt. Maybe you'll make some adjustments. Somebody made a great point the other day, um, that it's, it's hard to, um, you know, because I've, I've been in, uh, I've been listening to both sides of, uh, the argument when the lions, you know, the whole business about going for it on fourth down. And I was like, you know, whatever. I don't, and it, it's true. I don't really fault anybody for the decisions that they made. And, um, but I did hear one thing by, um, what the fuck is that guy's name? Uh, Phil Sims kid. I forget his name. He was a shitty quarterback for Texas. And then in the NFL, he sucked too. And now he's, uh, He's a talking head on TV, whatever that guy, he goes, you know, I've heard all these people talk about Dan Kelly. We did it all year this way. We're not going to change. We're not going to change. Well, the 49ers, you know, they played a certain type of defense in the first half of that game, the same way they'd done all year. I don't know if it was zone or some shit. And then they changed. And in the second half, after the change, they beat the shit out of the lions. They adapted. The Lions did not adapt. They kept doing the same shit they did all year. So I think that that's actually a valid point. But I don't know how much it would have mattered because if you notice in that game, uh, the Lions did everything wrong in that game. If you think about that game, all the crazy shit that went down in the second half, if if just one of those things happens, one of those things, you lose a game. One of those drops on fourth down, you could lose a game. Uh, one of those fourth down plays, you could lose a game. One of those ball off the face mask, uh, face mask into the other guy's hand, which leads to a touchdown play, 
you you lose the game. Fumble. All of that happened in less than 30 minutes of football. It was a fantastic fuck up. It was a catastrophic collapse. Oh, God. In fact, last week at this time, it was like, oh, shucks. We were close. And now it's like, what a colossal uh, catastrophe that was. You assholes. (laughs) Oh, God. Patrick says the Lions were stomping the 49ers' ass. There was no reason to change the game plan at halftime. That's true. That is true. It's a good point. But they quickly lost sight of what was going on because the 49ers were just fucking slobber knockering them. And then they 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 even if they did change, it wouldn't have mattered. Not Chuck Norris. I don't recognize that name. That's a, that's a new name. All right. Um, meanwhile, I want to invite you all to sign up for my cameo. Hire me. I've, I've been doing a few of those lately. I did, I think, three last week. I really appreciate that. I love doing cameos. Cameo.com slash Eric Zane. If you want me to do a cameo for somebody, whether it's, uh, you know, I can be as nice or not as nice as you want me to be cameo.com slash Eric Zane. They are $20. And I, uh, I pride myself on my cameos. If, uh, you're thinking about life insurance and I know you should be, I want you to think about Frank fuss, the licensed independent insurance agent slash broker from my policy shop insurance, get life insurance today. I'm getting ready to renew my policy with Frank because we outlived the one that we had. Uh, In fact, I have to impress that upon Jacqueline and Justin now that they are married uh, to get a life insurance policy. Now, every person varies, but that policy of mine that is expiring when I bought it 20 years ago, I had $500,000 insurance in case I died. Uh, the queen of the forest had a rider for 200,000 and the kids each had a rider for $10,000. All of that was $38 a month. Now think about that. If something, something catastrophic happens to uh, mom or dad, that's what the type of uh, benefit check that would have been delivered because I spent 38 bucks a month all told Life of that policy, I spent a little over $9,000 for 20 years. It's a pittance. Now, super preferred, great health, non-smoker, and young. Uh, That's why I'm telling you to do that now. I was 33 years old when I bought that policy. Uh, You need to get in on a policy today. If you're older, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to pay a ton of money. If your health is good, you pass all because they give you a full exam and they check your doctor records. Uh, if you're in good health, super preferred, you can get a shit ton of insurance for the rest of your years. Go to buyinsurancehere.com. Talk to Frank Fuss today about the importance of this and uh, how great it is that Eric Zane sent you. Buyinsurancehere.com. Thank you to Impact Power Sports. Online at impactpowersports.com. For fun, ATV, UTV, motorcycle, Yamaha golf carts. They are Michigan's newest dealer of Yamaha golf carts. Impact Power Sports, MI.com. Go there and shop uh, or go in person to Rockford, Michigan. Impact Power Sports, exact location on the website. They also have a fantastic service department. If you already have one of these uh, fun things that you utilize in the great outdoors, and they will service it for you. Impact Power Sports, MI.com, sponsoring the studio of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Okay, I was asked to inform you by my friends at the Vouch Store that this would be a fantastic gift for somebody for Valentine's Day. 
especially if you're an athlete or you're just starting an exercise program or perhaps someone recovering from injury, rehabilitation, or someone suffering from sore muscles or joints who may happen to be elderly, like I am. The Nimble Accelerate and the Nimble Express. These are percussion massage gun uh, therapy devices that work outstanding. If you've ever walked through a store like Strider's or what's that store called? Brookstone. You've seen these on display and you've thought, oh my God, this thing would be heaven. Then you need a Nimble Accelerate. Makes a great gift for Valentine's Day. Either the full-size one for $369. I know that's steep, but they're outstanding and you'll never need another one again. Or the smaller one, the Express, for $199. You can get these on my Vouch store. Vouch.store slash Eric Zane. That's Vouch.store slash Eric Zane, along with the other products that we sell. Vouch combines uh, content creators with small business. I just put it on the uh, live stream too for you to check out and uh, off you go. You got the gin bundle for sale. You got the coffee from Split Rock Coffee there and the toothbrush. I have four products available on my Vouch Store shop at the Eric Zane Vouch Store. That's vouch.store slash Eric Zane. All right. Meanwhile, uh, Thanks again to, um, to the Vault Store, as I said, Impact Power Sports and Frank Fuss. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, you engaging those sponsors. Okay, hold still. I've got yet another update on comedian Mark Norman. Been covering, the, covering this for a week and a half. Started out as, oh my God, it was a terror threat at the Mark Norman comedy show. Then it went to, oh no, no, it was just a fugitive on the run from the law. And he got cornered on stage with comedian Mark Norman. And then it went to Mark Norman said, no, no, uh, I went viral. Somebody wanted to go viral. So they gave me a bunch of money just to stand there. What? We got another update. I'll be right back. Sit tight. Ben Glaze checking in. He writes, uh, I need to know how much money Mark Norman made because it was a stupid move on his part. People online are saying they no longer respect him. Okay. All right. Okay. Apparently, according to Ben Glaze, apparently it's all to promote the social media group. High high. And the new movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. They wanted to do some type of viral marketing, I guess. Now, how I don't understand yet. Maybe I will after this. I don't understand how somebody walking on stage is going to promote the movie, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Maybe just because of what I just did. If it doesn't kill me, I'm going for it. I've been through a lot. I need that. Hi, hi. You are attending a comedy show headlined by Mark Norman. There's a target you must abduct at the end of the show. If at any point he tries to leave, you must capture and abduct him on the spot. Zip tie their hands and escort them out of the building into a SUV in front of the venue where two men in black will take him. John Doe, we are coming for you. Remember, if you get upset by a joke, you get really stupid. Okay. Getting the best. Hey, welcome back. Okay. All right. Uh-oh. What do we got? Mike here? Hey, what's going on? Oh, geez. Everything all right? Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Anything can happen in a comedy? So they're, they're playing this background so that we know what's going on. I guess these three people that were involved were supposed to abduct Mark Norman, but there was no abduction going on. What? <laughs> so if you don't know what's going on, you're just hearing music playing. I understand, but I've, I've, you know, 
Mark Norman on stage. Somebody walks up. The guy walks off the stage because they escort him off. And then people come and get Mark Norman. And then everybody's like, what the fuck is going on? What's what's happening? What happened to Mark? <laughs> Media Mark Norman rushed off stage. All the buzz about what happened. All the uh, headlines. Missy completed. You've completed all three missions. Hi, hi. Travel to Lake Como, Italy. Secure high-value target Toby Hellinger. The fuck? You're American? Yeah, this was poorly executed. The... What? Uh, Ben Glaze says, Hi, hi, gets Donald Glover to do something in the movie. Then Ben writes, no, they were supposed to abduct the guy that went on stage. I'm confused as fuck. What? I, I I don't understand any of this. The guy just walked on stage and then. Okay, so the guy walks on stage and they abduct the guy that went on stage. But he was in on it too. The whole thing is fucking stupid. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. And, you know, they're like, oh, well, this is uh, to be viral for the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay, great. Now I'm just annoyed. And um, I, out of spite, will not watch the film Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Because this is so goddamn dumb. Uh, hang on, ladies and gentlemen, I got to bring in this legend who might be able to explain, who might be able to explain this better to us. Ben, Ben, hello. How are you? Yes. Hello. I'm good. I just was watching the podcast and saw that you were confused about what was going on with the viral clip. Yeah. So the, the people that were the, if you watch the video, the, the black women in the video are supposed to chase the guy that goes on stage and get him and uh, zip tie his hands together and then walk him away from the club. That's what was supposed to happen. Okay. Okay. Now- which, which, which they ended up doing. But uh, part of the club, I guess, the, the one lady that freaks out on stage after the, uh, the incident, I don't think she was in on it. That's why they blacked out her face. Oh. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute, though. So um, was the guy who got zip-tied, was he in on it? Yes, I think so. He, he's he's part of the high-high group, I think, and he's the, the mark that was supposed to get zip-tied. So I'm pretty sure that he was in on it, and they were. that's why they – went after him. Yeah. Oh, fucking shit. That's why he was getting that's why he was getting chased around the club. So uh now Rebecca writes it's a series. It's actually pretty good. The uh I, I didn't realize it was a series, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So the so they so they took the movie, made a series out of it, and this is the way that they're drumming up interest in it is by these stupid stunts on on stage at a at a at a mid level comedian show. Correct. They're doing all types of random stuff. And the people that, like the, the women that uh, zip-tied the guy, they get money now from from that group for doing it. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, it was all a big a big paid promotion. Oh, uh, fuck. All right. Yeah. Now, was, it, was it supposed to be revealed? Because it seems like nobody knew what the fuck was going on. And they had to come out. And, are you at the car wash? No. Sorry. <laughs> it might be. It might be. <laughs> it might be my air that's or my heat. There um, we go. I turned it off. So the guy, um, so yeah, it, it was the fact that they basically had to come out a week afterwards and tell us specifically what was going on. Yeah, the 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 whole reasoning behind it was to go viral, um, and I guess it worked. And now they're yeah coming out and saying. I think Donald Glover at the time posted in his Instagram story. I think he linked uh, the high high group on Instagram. Yeah. 
Now, do you think that this conversation is more fun to talk about than the weather? Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Ben. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Hopefully uh, you're less confused now. I am now. Thank you. Okay. Yep. All right, All right buddy. There you go. Ben Glaze with a rare phoned appearance on the show. See, see how, uh, see how much easier he is to listen to when he's, uh, comfortable, you know, I mean, he's on with Anthony. He's like, Oh, Hey Ben, how are you? And now would you expect Ben to say, Oh my God, this stupid Mark Norman stunt. I can't believe it. Oh, really? Tell me about it, Ben. No, Ben's got to go. Oh, it's weather time with Ben. All right. Uh, ben Weller says, I started Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It didn't hold my interest. I like Donald Glover, too. And then referred to Ben as B. Glizzy. All right. Love that. Rebecca says, you have to get past the first one or two episodes. Then it gets good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't participate in shows that make me watch the first one or two and then they get good. In fact, you've got about three minutes. All right. That's what you need to do. That's why when I start this podcast, every time it's out of a cannon, better get to that first story within 10 seconds. Don't start a podcast with, Hey, well, here's the weather and the traffic. Start telling me the shit that's happening or I'm gone. And I expect you to do that to me too. If you turn on my fucking podcast and after 30 seconds, I don't have anything worth uh, listening to shut the whole goddamn thing down. Don't do it. Benji says, took a couple Eric Zane show podcasts before I took to it. Oh, well, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. Uh, Rebecca says that's your ADHD, LOL, maybe perhaps it. Yeah. I don't, there isn't one thing that I list that is a podcast that I think is like, okay, I've got to keep listening. There was only one podcast that I've ever listened to that I had to hear the next episode Two actually one was the first issue of Siri or first season of serial about uh, what's his now name? Adnan. What the fuck? That thing. And then the other one is the white boy, Rick, um, shattered white boy, Rick story, white boy, Rick story by, uh, Kevin Dietz. Only two. Everything else sucks. All right. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. Appreciate the help. state of Iowa, the, uh, satanic, uh, temple put up a, uh, fucking goat display. Not that different than what they did here in uh, the great state of Michigan. This is it right here. You got like the head of this goat guy and then the flowers, the pentagram, you got candles and then uh there's no doubt a note that says this display is only up here because of legal reasons it's not endorsed by the state <clears throat> this all happened in various states because states started to put up nativity scenes and then um people were like well you can't combine church and state so if you are going to do that if you're going to allow that one then you have to allow ours too which they are right this is the same organization that friend of the show Bender Bones is part of. He is part of the uh, Satanic Temple, West Michigan. Which I honestly do not believe that these people actually worship Satan. I think it's not what we think. I mean, it says that, but... And seriously, when you look up the tenets of the satanic temple, 
they're all absolutely things that you and I would want to abide by in our day-to-day living. It's the old golden rule, treat others that you, as you would treat yourself, respect others, all that shit. Well, some, some uh, right-wing conservative fuckhead, I think it's this guy, I don't know who the fuck it was, um, saw that display and he, he, he destroyed it. He's like, ah, fuck this shit. This is a Jesus state. And he goes in and he like, takes a fucking bat and he hits the damn thing and everything's all busted up. The goat's all fucked up. And all these people in the state chamber are like, yeah, all right. Yeah, man. Fuck them. Christians. We love right wing shit. Fuck the black people. And yes, assholes say no to gays. Kent says, call Bender. I would, I don't have his number. I don't have Bender's phone number. Well, you know, like in Michigan, they had, they had that one on the front lawn and, and that one wacko, um, he met, remember he started praying in front of it to Jesus and stuff. I was like, Oh God damn it. It drives me crazy when, um, uh, politicians, you know, try to push religion on the constituents say this is this is the way it ought to be you know it's like those those two things should not blend uh should be a separation there when it comes to how we run the business of the united states and each individual state uh brandis who is in the great state of iowa says yep leave it to iowa to suck once again well this is uh this is really turning hilarious now because the way the law works, the guy who destroyed the goat is being charged with a hate crime. <laughs> How much of a fuck up do you have to be to be charged with a hate crime when you fucking destroy the goat, the stupid goat display? You asshole. <laughs> Holy shit. A Mississippi man admitted to destroying the pagan idol Baphomet or Baphomet. I think it's called Baphomet has been charged with a hate crime because it was an organized display under state rules. I don't know how much you talk about Iowa ruins things. I don't think Iowa's was ruining anything here. Iowa is following the letter of the law. Uh, state rules allowing religious displays in the Iowa Capitol during the holidays. The installation drew strong criticism from state and national leaders, including Governor Kim Reynolds and uh, Ron DeSantis. Wouldn't it be fantastic if somebody just ran and um, actually said, well, I think it has happened and they don't win because America is stupid. When it comes to combining religion and politics, I I would look, I would seek out a candidate that says I have no religious affiliation. I mean, I do have a religious affiliation, but I keep it personal. It has nothing to do with my goal to run the city, county, state, country, uh, period. That's what I love about Trump. Trump has never set foot in a church in his whole life. Trump has had, has done nothing but have chicks get abortions yet because all of you people who love Trump are so stupid, you think he's like a right wing evangelical just because he holds up a Bible and says, we must protect life. You morons. He's been the exact opposite for the majority of his life. He's only doing that because you goddamn sheep will believe anything and you'll uh, uh, let him be the president, you stupid dicks. Well, anyway, on December 14th, the Baphomet display was destroyed beyond repair. And yeah, this is the guy, Michael Cassidy, this, this fucking idiot is the one that did it. 
Michael Cassidy is a former congressional candidate from Mississippi, was charged the following day with fourth-degree criminal mischief, a misdemeanor. The Lauderdale, Mississippi man told the conservative website, The Sentinel, that, quote, my conscience is held captive to the word of God, not to bureaucratic decree, and so I acted heretofore. You idiot. Now, Polk County prosecutors have accused Cassidy of a more serious offense, a charging document made public Tuesday, last Tuesday, charged him with felony third-degree criminal mischief and notes that the act was committed, quote, in violation of individual rights under Iowa's hate crime statute. Brandis, you criticize your state, but that's a great fucking law. Evidence shows the defendant made statements to law enforcement that the public indicated that the public indicating he's destroyed the property because the victim's religion, quote, triggering the violation of individual rights enhancement, said Lynn Hicks, the spokesman for the Polk County Attorney's Office. I would love to prosecute this guy. Uh, Cassidy's attorney, Sarah Pasquale, declined to comment Tuesday on the new charge. In previous court filings, she has accused the Satanic Temple of making premature filings that quote, like the timing and substance of the Satanic Temple of Iowa's installation of a demonic statue in the Capitol building are only meant to evoke strong emotions and incite others. Disagree. The Satanic Temple, yes, that may be what happens to you, but they're probably doing that because of the state capitol allowing religious displays to take place there in the first place, which should be a problem. Excuse them for using your own uh, principles to allow the installations of whomever to take place in the first place. Now, don't ever lose sight of the fact that EZ is Team Jesus. Okay? Well, that's me and my, you know, I stay in my lane. I don't don't look at anybody and say, you should do this, you should do that. Fuck it. Except for maybe Scientologists. But even that, I shouldn't. Scientology, you know, I mean, all, all I need to do is, uh, well, pretty much I've, I've kind of gotten a way of organized religion in the first place. Organized religion in itself is kind of really starting to get under my skin. Uh, in a lot of ways, I'm starting to feel like organ- organized religion is a great big fucking racket. Um, that shows its ass time and again. That makes me go, <laughs> I think I should start a church. It's called just be awesome to everyone. It's just called love everyone and be respectful. Wouldn't that be spectacular? As you know, I always am. Um, the uh, cost to replace the statue would be $750 to $1,500, making its destruction an aggravated misdemeanor. In fact, the temple has filed a damage estimate putting the cost to replace the statue at $3,000. What makes the charge a felony is because it's a hate crime. <laughs> this fucking idiot is getting charged with a hate crime for destroying the horn goat. <laughs> Mitch writes, Zane, just quit talking and fill the collection plate. You know, I don't, um, I don't mind religion that let's say you've got a church that, um, it costs a certain amount of money for the church leader. Let's say it's a, it's a, uh, normal wage, not a lot of money, but just in order to keep the operation of the church to lead the ceremonies to do the outreach, all those things. Uh, also the cost to, um, run the business end of the church, you know, keep the lights on, keep the heat on, uh, any type of, uh, repairs needed to the structure. And then the outreach, uh, you know, you, you give away the money to various organizations that are in need. 
soup kitchen, the elderly, meals on wheels, shit like that. Outside of that, there's really no more. I can't think of anything else you would need, you know, which is why I'm always very suspicious when the leader of the church has a lot of money. You know, around here, you got a lot of offshoot churches that are run by individuals and pastors and things like that. And they, they make a lot of money. You know, they, they should not. They should not make a lot of money. Um, anything beyond your means is, in my opinion, when it, in the name of religion, in excess. Uh, Chris says those should be separate functions. That way the leader or pastor doesn't need to focus on money. I think we're on to something here. That's why it's always uh, remarkable to me when you hear about pe- leaders of churches who, um, like Patrick says, some of those guys need planes and hot tubs who are extremely wealthy in leading their churches. And I don't know how normal thinking individuals can go to those churches and support them. How can you possibly do that? You're actually, this guy or girl is living in the lap of luxury and you keep fucking falling for it. I mean, you look at the unbelievable wealth of the Catholic church. It's remarkable how much money goes into the Catholic church. Benji adds, how can anyone support a religion that protects uh, abusers? Well, when I say, when you say religion, uh, of course, there's religions like Christianity is a religion. And then there's denominations. I don't think the whole of Christianity supports abuse. And I don't think any religion supports abuse. But there have been glaring, horrible deeds that have happened in different uh, denominations that do exist that have been, in fact, a cover-up. You'll need about 500 years of no child rape to (laughs) turn the uh, denomination that is Catholicism around. Wenji keeps calling Catholicism a religion. It's not. It's a den- it's a den- I'm just trying to ha- correct you on the on the nomenclature. That is a denomination. That is not a religion. Christianity is the religion. I'm being specific with you so you stop sounding like you're retarded. I'm not splitting hairs. I'm just telling you it's, it's Catholicism is a denomination, you dumb fuck. I didn't make up the rules. It's the English language. Now he says, that's not a cool word, man. I disagree. You're a retard. You sound retarded right now. (laughs) Don't blame me. You're the one that's doing it. All right. How the fuck did we get on that? Oh, we were talking about the goat display. Holy shit. Um. Thank you to Irvine's, my partner is an ADHD, my soul sister, my ADHD sister, Megan, and her lovely family at Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV, 616-532-6600. Call Irvine's when your car needs to be fixed or when you're just doing preventative maintenance to keep it on the road or whatever. Uh, they They work on all makes and models. Um, including hybrids, EVs, and regular old-fashioned combustion motors. 616-532-6600 today or online at ervines.com. Irvines.com. Early bird drop-off. Late bird pickup. You can ask about their loaner cars that they will give you for free. Free loaner car when you get your car fixed at Irvines. You got Joe Martinez from A&E Heating and Cooling still doing the free furnace tune-ups Till the end of February, 616-516-8579. That's 616-516-8579. That is a great deal. $79 is what that would cost you. You pay nothing, absolutely nothing, 
because of a D he's got a, a deal. He's got worked out with DTE energy. If you need a furnace repair or maybe a brand new furnace or AC installed, call Joe 616-516-8579. The best mention your old pal EZ. Of course, when you call also tag accounting, tis the season three months out of the year tag accounting reaches out and says, look, we need bodies in your audience getting their taxes done from tag accounting. So now is the time. Get this done. This will be the easiest thing you do all day. You call that number at the top, 616-301-9516, or send an email to right here, uh, Troy at tagcpa.net. You say the both things. You say both things either way. Easy sent me for you to do my taxes. Eric Zane wants you to do my taxes. That's all you do. He takes care of the rest. Follow his lead. They'll tell you what to do. And then the next thing you know, boom, your taxes are done. You've got more money coming to you electronically into your account than you have ever before. No muss, no fuss. You just collect up your documents. You get them to Troy via his online portal and boom, you're done. And I mean, everybody in your family, I made the mistake last year, incredibly, uh, of having my taxes done by Troy, the NFKs, and then Madison's. I said, ah, I can do Maddie's. And guess who fucked it up? Never again. Tagcpa.net. All these great sponsors, you can be like one of these great sponsors. If you have, or someone you know has a business, have them reach out to me about being on the Eric Zane Show podcast. Okay. A guy in Texas, 22 years old, was sick and tired of perverts, grown men, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> soliciting kids online and then meeting with them for sex. Horrible. Every parent's nightmare. I don't know the history of uh, this guy, this vigilante, James Spencer. He's only 22. He's he's the good guy in this story. Uh, maybe something bad happened to him when he was a kid. And uh, now he's grown up, young adult, and decided he wanted to be a vigilante. You hear about these vigilantes from time to time where they will um, pose as a child online talk to some pervert and then, uh, Hey, let's meet up. And then they, uh, go up to the car where the meeting place is. The car fits the description of the guys inside waiting to meet his, uh, his young victim, you know? And then, um, the guy posing as a child will have like a video camera and will expose the dude and then, uh, you know, make it public ruin his life, turn him into the cops, shit hits the fan. I mean, that is, that is fantastic. Uh, James Spencer was doing that type of uh, work, except he wasn't showing up with a video camera. He was uh, showing up with weaponry and uh, uh, shot the bad guy. Justice is served. He killed him. He would find his plan was to find the bad guy, pose as a kid, find the bad guy, bad guy shows up, and then kill the bad guy. Now, my God, um, part of all of us is like, well, why, uh, why is this guy in trouble? He's probably going to spend the rest of his life in prison. He's in trouble because we have laws. Unfortunately, we have laws against this type of behavior. Uh, so it's more than likely that this guy is going to be in prison for quite some time. Uh, regardless of the likability of the victim, we are a nation of laws, said the local prosecutor. Nobody gets to be the judge, jury, and executioner, depending on how they feel. 
It is not immediately clear if Spencer has entered a plea or retained an attorney. Okay, so I'm guessing you're going to get kind of like a um, a unique cultural phenomenon that t- that takes place in this story in uh, in Texas because you know Texas is the home of the righteous and the and the and the right wing and you know protect our children all that shit, which is fine. I mean, who who wouldn't want to protect your children? I mean, I would think that everybody who heard that story at either deep down or outwardly like I am is saying, well, good. I'm, I'm glad that guy, I'm glad James Spencer, the third 22 shot and killed the, the bad guy, 37 year old. His name happened to be Sean Connery showers. Like the bad games, the bad guy's middle name was Connery, Sean Connery showers. Showers. Uh, the bad guy approached a vehicle in the early morning hours of May 29th and was shot by the good guy, who at the time was unidentified. Upon further investigation, police arrested Spencer, who they claim admitted to the killing. Showers was found in a ditch with multiple gunshot wounds. Spencer claimed to be a minor online in an attempt to lure Showers under the guise of sex, who he, he believed was a sex offender. And obviously he was right. The bad guy was a repeat offender. He had pleaded guilty, like the dead guy pleaded guilty to possessing child sex abuse material in 09. Uh, He was sentenced to 30 months in prison. And then for two years, he went back in 2019 because he failed to register as a sex offender. So he's, I mean, it is excellent, excellent news that this guy is dead. You know there's going to be a ton of support for this James Spencer the third for killing that guy. Um, it's a goddamn shame that he has to, that he will serve time in prison. How long we don't know, but you can just imagine that there's going to be people lining up to support him, probably paying for a high priced lawyer, um, doing whatever they can to get this guy off. I think that, I mean, I think we're almost a little too civilized here in the U S I think we should actually have like a wild card that kind of like just patrols the internet that not only do you run the risk, if you're a pervert of talking to a cop, which that doesn't seem to slow anybody down, but they should actually have uh, random wild cards that are out there that uh, have the right to shoot you dead if you they find if you're an adult trying to rape a child i mean why the fuck not ben glaze says he'll be a hero in jail and then refers to the dead guy as sean connery showers with men i think boys might work better there ben Shaquille O'Neal used to do that for the Miami police. Seven foot plus black guy used to go online and pretend he was a teenage girl so that cops would go after the dude. I would hope that Shaq would show up at the, at the rendezvous. Chris says, give the uh, vigilante 30 days to be served on weekends. Case closed. Let's see. What else do I have for you here? Oh, God. This story, fantastic. Hot mom. Only fans page. Has in the back of her car. See me on only fans with her name. Uh, picks up like the eight year old from school. In like the, you know, like the, uh, where the parents show up to pick up the kids. She's in front of the school in, in the car that says, Hey kids, Joey doesn't say, Hey kids. It might as well say, Hey kids, check out my only. F- <laughs> oh my God. And so everybody at the school, there's a lot of pearl clutching going on and it's at a Christian school. 
<laughs> this is excellent. Oh my god. Here you go. This is this is the story. A Florida mom at odds with other parents over a controversial decal on her car. She says there's nothing illegal about advertising her OnlyFans account, but it's causing a stir at her kid's private Christian school. Oh. Janice has a story from the newsroom. This is what I am looking at when I pull up behind one of these vehicles. Facebook messages complain. Let me hold on a second. Let's read those Facebook messages. Hello, Michelle. I'm sure you're aware that the ads on your vehicles have been a huge problem for families at Christian school. I know you enlarged them after LCP told you the vehicles were banned on school property. Uh, hello. However, I don't know if you are aware that. Um, I can't read the rest of that one. This one says, I know this has been a problem for a year or so. So it appears from the outside that our children are of no concern to you. And neither are any rules. However, I sat behind your vehicle dropping off children on Tuesday night. Tuesday, right in front of the school. And although I have taken this to be the, I have taken this to the school and am demanding a permanent consequence. I did want to reach out to you. Is this the life? What you are? And that's all I can get out of it. Facebook messages, complaints. Good morning, Michelle and Randy. I pray all is well. I am writing today to let you know. That the OnlyFans decals on the vehicles are causing a disruption at Christian school. Mrs. Thomas, the school counselor, had been reached had reached out before to ask you not to ho- have those advertisements on campus. But it appears the vehicles with those decals have been back on campus. I guess she enlarged them. I am requesting that you respect our request to keep the advertisement off campus. If you'd like to bring your vehicles on campus, please cover up the decals. If you'd like to park off campus, you are welcome to do so. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. Regardless of the nature of the business, that would mean that any vehicle on campus that has a um, work decal would not be allowed on campus to the letter of the law. As far as my meager opinion goes, which is not much. And TikToks. You ban a vehicle. Taking the front row pew at a private Christian school. Not just a tiny, tiny little emblem on the back of a car. It is taking up the entire windshield. Oh. Back windshield of two vehicles. Oh. This is a parent at Liberty Christian who. <laughs> now at the start of this, they didn't have the whole decal displayed on this Dodge. It's the OnlyFans logo with the OnlyFans writing and then the actual name, dot com slash Piper Fawn. Now it's it's available to look at. So and she doesn't know how to park. Um this is so fantastic. So now Piper Fawn, just by showing up to school a couple of times, she's brilliant. She that might have been her only um um reason for doing this so that a story like this would go viral. And now the entire world is looking at her boobies. Jesus. Who wants this ad on another parent's car to stay off campus (laughs) up close on the logo. This is such fantastic branding from a marketing standpoint. It's, it's fucking great. That other parent is Michelle Klein and what she has is an only fans. Well, it's definitely linked to, you know, explicit content. (laughs) And she is unabashed, too. She is like, yeah, of course. Only fans. Well, it's definitely linked to, you know, explicit content, adult content, for sure. Klein, who goes by Piper Fawn, says only fans is her business and way of life. My husband and I had this, you know, little wild, you know, behind closed doors lifestyle that we've now decided to share. <laughs> but not all parents want what Klein is sharing. Shared at school with some moms complaining to Klein and the school telling her not to use the main entrance and instead drop her kids off across the street. I was forced to have to, um, you know, take it off or not come on campus. But parents at this private school say there's a simple solution. Okay, before we go on, can you imagine when you were growing up? Like I, I the school age that these kids were, I was, it was the 1970s or the 1980s. The idea that 
everyone would know that my mom is a porn star is so unnerving to me. It's devastating. Uh, But today is so different. I mean, sexually, there's a lot more going on. It's a lot. It's still taboo, but not that taboo. Nowadays, your mom can be a porn star and it's no big deal. Um, And apparently mom does not care. She's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so what? I'm in porno and I'm filthy fucking rich. And it's, it's fantastic that the school is talking about this. Because now I'm getting so much more pub, it's incredible. If Klein wants to and the best part is, it's right-wing conservatives who are now, oh, oh my God. Now that's just funny. Who's the main drop-off? Mm-hmm. Why not take the decal off? And that would seem like an easy thing to say, for sure. But for me, you know, it's, it supports my family. This provides a, a very comfortable way of life for us. And <laughs> it's legal. You know, I pay taxes just like everyone else. But I'm not breaking the law. I just offended people. That's... A distraction to my children. This chick here, she should start her own page too because she's cute as shit. No matter how poorly or how good I parent, porn is there. And if that's kind of the first thing they're seeing when they're going into um, a place that should be educating them. Klein says... I don't don't buy that. Um, Whenever I hear parents say... I can only educate them so much. No matter what I do, I can't. I can't protect them. They shouldn't be. Wor- I think you need to give them a little bit more credit. Just be totally honest with them. Just don't mince words. Just say, "Yeah, uh, people like to watch people fuck." That's that's what's going on there. I don't know. May- maybe not that. That might not be the best advice. She wants the school, at the very least, to provide someone to help her kids get across the street safely. <laughs> all right. All of this. All of this because they're worked up about seeing somebody uh, watch, somebody watching someone with a ding dong go into them. Um. Now, I, I, I might draw the line with, because I've before on the show talked about OnlyFans person. Um, if you're an OnlyFans star and an actual teacher, an actual educator, I think that that might be where I would have to draw the line. I think that's a bit different. At least in this case, it's just, all right, you're reminded every so often that one of the kids has a mommy who uh, is, mommy's a little naughty, you know? Tyler says the women who are angry are only pissed because they caught their husband subscribing to her OnlyFans. Well, you know, yeah, the every single dude there is, uh, and that's probably happened where where um, one of the women um, caught the the husband I mean who wouldn't be curious that is an unbelievable level of curiosity I can tell you right now that if I find out that any one of you is an OnlyFans uh, has an OnlyFans page I am going to watch you pork I don't care if you're a boy or a girl I am going to see your uh, privates I can promise you without a doubt the curiosity is outrageous. Even if it's like a, like a bestiality movie, let's say Ben has sex with a donkey. I'm going to watch that without a doubt. Okay? There is uh, no way that I am going to avoid that. Um, in fact, uh, there was um, a comment made that I've, I've intentionally been avoiding this because, uh, but I would be... Uh, uh, a jackass if I did not mention it to some point, but uh, there was some nudity that happened on the uh, Ben and Eric Patreon podcast over the weekend. And though funny and shocking, that was not good. Um, I had a long talk with Hurricane Ashley. It wasn't a long talk. It was just a, Hey, Hey, I'm not mad, but don't do that anymore. Please. You can, you are, we, we nudity is not allowed on the Patreon. Uh, I didn't ask any questions as to why it happened, but, um, 
Ashley decided to show her boobies um, on the Patreon. And uh, I said, okay, that's enough. No more boobies. And she did it a second time. And I said, okay, seriously, no more. And I gave her way, way too many chances. And then I uh, blocked her camera. And then she said, all right, well, I'm leaving. I said, okay. And she left. And then I took the uh, video and I edited it out. It was available for <clears throat> about 22 hours. And it, it takes a lot of time to clean those up. Uh, editing video is not my favorite thing, but she made a lot of extra work for me. And uh, I removed the boobies. So um, it did happen. And that cannot happen again. And if it happens again, I'm going to have to ban people. Um, Chris says, you didn't edit it all out, though. Now that I'm not aware of. Are you telling me you can actually see a boob? Maybe when you posted the still, which was horrible. Is that what you're referring to? Ah. Well, thank you for reminding me. I, now I got to go back and do that again. Thank you, Chris, for telling me. Yeah, that was a real pain in my ass. That was unfortunate. Uh, well, I guess I got to go back and watch it again. Try not to do any nudity on the Patreon. That would be very, very uh, helpful to EZ. <clears throat> No, I'm not mad, but um, it was not good. Not good at all. You could have made my life very difficult. If I get banned on Patreon, that's a uh, that's a pretty fair amount of my income. That's thousands of dollars leaving me. So uh, no more. No more, please. Uh, buy a T-shirt at ericsaneshow.com. I've got T-shirts. I've got merches. I've got merch, coffee mugs, all sorts of stuff up there for you to check out. Uh, if you need a mortgage, call upon the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. Thank you very much. Uh, whether it's your first mortgage or your 10th, you know, not all mortgage people are created equal. A lot of times they're like, oh, God, I got some guy from whatever town and uh, wants to buy a $140,000 house. Ah, oh, shit, I got to deal with this guy in a low-end mortgage. No, that is not the case because Mario knows that uh, first-time mortgage uh, folks, become second, third, and fourth time. Reach out at 231-332-6505 from no matter where you are in the listening audience, the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. 231-332-6505. We've got basketball this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. The Grand Rapids Gold are in action. Get your tickets at grandrapidsgold.com. They're just 14 bucks. Thursdays, Fridays, $2 beers and $2 dogs. GrandRapidsGold.com. Paintball event coming up on the 18th of February. Reach out, Eric, at EricZaneShow.com if you want in. That's Eric at EricZaneShow.com at the Shoreliner Striping Inbox for TC Paintball. Paintball War number 23, the battle. For the Rio Grande. And book your own event at TC Paintball online at tcpaintballgr.com today. The asshole of the day is Ashley for showing her breasts on non-nudity Patreon. What the hell is wrong with you? That is going to do it for the Eric Zane Show podcast. I thank each and every one of you for being here today and enjoying it. Hopefully it was good. I try not to suck. I'll be back later on on the Patreon. Till then, have a good one. Bye-bye.